A company just emailed me asking me to review a water hose. What a way to start a video. Virtual reality roller coasters, self-adjusting eyewear, and the blackest material known to man. That's what I like. Alrighty guys, welcome back to another episode of this weird, wonderful thing that I do every week now, where I talk about all of the things that I found online that I like. And this week's episode is gonna be extremely VR heavy, so the first five-sevenths of this video or so are going to be VR. Just beware. So to start off, the first 30 launch titles for the Oculus Rift have been announced. They're going to be available on March 28th, and there's a whole list of them here I'm looking at. And just looking through them, I see things like Adventure Time and Project Cars and Defense Grid 2, Elite Dangerous, The Vanishing of Ethan Carter and Pinball and Virtual Tennis, and I'm really looking forward to virtual reality stuff, and I'm sincerely hoping that all of these games work with the DK2, because I do still have it here. PlayStation VR, a lot more information came out about it. They had an event where they talked all about it. First and foremost, it's going to be $399, but that $399 is going to get you a headset and that's about it. So it's not going to come with the camera so it can't actually do any tracking out of the box. So unless you already own the PS4 camera, you're going to have to pay another 60 bucks on top of that. It's not going to come with the PlayStation Move controllers so you're not going to be able to interact with anything without like the PlayStation controller which is going to be kind of awkward. I'm sure the Move controllers are like 50 or 60 bucks so you're already gone from $400 to like 500 or 600 depending on what you buy. You're getting really close to that point to the Oculus Rift price or potentially even the HTC Vive price if you consider what you get Get with that. But still, if you are interested in it, they've also put out a list of some of the games that are coming out for PlayStation VR. They say that Sony's expecting 50 games to be released between the PlayStation VR launch, which is going to happen in October, and then the end of 2016. So 50 games in that time. And they're showing off 20 of them at GDC, which is going on right now. Looking through the list here, I see Job Simulator, Star Wars Battlefront VR, and I'm going to say it, a lot of games that I'm not familiar with, but I'm sure they're all wonderful. Now continuing in that VR vein, as we're going to keep doing, completely out of the blue, something called Sulon on Q, and I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. There's a video here I'm not even going to bother to watch right now. It is another option for virtual and augmented reality, sort of like Microsoft's HoloLens. They're saying this is an all-in-one, tether-free, wear-and-play headset, and that's a quote. And actually, if it's all-in-one, yeah, it says it's got in it the AMD FX 8800P processor, Radeon R7 graphics, uh, four compute cores and eight GPU cores. So it's, it's an entire computer that you're going to wear on your head and interact with things using your head. That's really interesting, except for the fact that it's all AMD stuff. Maybe I haven't used AMD in a long time, so I don't know here. Hopefully it doesn't get too hot, because if you're getting too hot inside of that, it melts your head. Pricing and release information has not yet been announced, though, so be on the lookout for more information. Still very cool to think that you could wear an entire powerful computer on your head and do augmented reality stuff. I'm going to go ahead and say it. In just a few years, we're going to have that in glasses. Ten years from now, you can count on it. And there were a few articles that popped up about audio for VR. So Sennheiser is making a 3D audio microphone. They called it Ambio. And it's actually a mic with like a mic array around it that you would attach to a VR a 360 camera, such that when it's recording the video in 360 degrees, it also records audio in 360. And then when paired up with the right headphones, you can move around and the audio will move accordingly. Very cool. Speaking of having the right headphones though, Samsung has also unveiled the Intrim 4D headphones. And they don't just do it by, by moving where the sound is in your ears. It says that it actually tricks your inner ear. It tricks some nerves in your ear with electrical stimulation. Galvanic vestibular stimulation, or GVS. It has to do with motion and equilibrium and spatial stuff. There's a video embedded in that article showing people using it and without using it. And basically the people that are using it are freaking out. It looks like they're drunk, like they're about to fall over. I'm definitely interested in that idea. Because really, the more immersive you can make the VR, the better it's going to be. It doesn't really matter how it looks. It does, but it doesn't matter as much as how it sounds. It's just like a YouTube video. The video can be beautiful, but if the audio is bad, it ain't going to be that great. Moving along, though. It was revealed at GDC this week that the Steam VR is going to have a desktop theater mode. So, in addition to having the, the HTC Vive with its wonderful interface you've seen in all the videos so far, the question that keeps popping up in people's minds is what happens to the games that don't support VR yet? Or games that are just never going to support it at all. Well, apparently you don't ever have to leave your VR headset again. You're going to be able to put it on and you'll be inside of this immersive landscape however you want to design it, and then you'll have a virtual display that pops up in front of you. If you saw my video about Altspace VR, the kind of thing where you go into the cinema there, it'll be kind of like that where you go up to your virtual display, however small or big you want to make it, you could have a, an entire movie theater sized display that's your game that you're going to play and just sit there in front of it with your controller 
and play the game. That's exciting. Lucasfilm has put out a trailer for a VR interactive lightsaber battle. They say it's only about 10 minutes long, but th this, is, this is why VR exists. I'm just gonna say it. This is a large part of the reason why VR is a thing, aside from porn. Shh. But they say it's set between the events of Return of the Jedi and The Force Awakens, and you actually have to use the lightsaber in very specific ways to deflect the bolts back. There's been things like this using the, the Wii and the PlayStation Move in the past, but this is actually going to be using like the HTC Vive, where you have to use the controllers to manually figure out where your lightsaber is. And like I was saying in the beginning, there's now a VR roller coaster at Six Flags. The video they show in the article is specifically Six Flags Georgia, but they do say that they're gonna be rolling it out to all of the Six Flags, and it's got a couple of kids sitting in a roller coaster wearing Samsung Gear VR headsets with phones in them, and they've got a relatively bland roller coaster that, when paired up with a mobile VR headset, is extremely immersive. Even though the graphics in the, the video they're showing look like something out of a 90s video game or an early 2000s video game. It's not pretty, we'll put it that way, but it's a start. And the fact of the matter is, with that, they could update that anytime they wanted to. And it wouldn't have to be a Superman-themed ride, you just have to update the software. You wouldn't have to update the actual hardware of the ride, unless you really wanted to, to make it more immersive and more entertaining. But so long as the software knew what to do and, and how everything moves around inside of it, in the video itself, it's showing them piloting this starfighter. And they have to move around, they have to shoot enemies as they're going around. Very cool. I'm not a roller coaster person, but if I were, this is the one I'd be going for. Speaking of games that I'd like to play, though, my son's still absolutely into Rocket League. We haven't played in a while, but he's gonna want to after he hears about this. Rocket League is getting a basketball mode. It's just in time for March Madness and basketball season and everything. They're adding in the ability to play basketball with cars and a giant ball. So if you have Rocket League, be on the lookout for that update. They're constantly putting out new and fun things. Speaking of which, if you have Rocket League on the Xbox One, I, I'm guessing if you were to buy it on any platform, the Xbox One is probably the one to play it on because Microsoft is making some changes. They're adding in the ability to Xbox One to be cross-platform with other consoles and PC. And Rocket League is the first game that they're gonna be showcasing this on coming up sometime this spring where someone from an Xbox One can play with people on PC or Xbox One can play with PS4. That is insane, that's awesome. That's exactly where we should have been all of this time ago. I know nothing about netcode so I can't say anything to that but cross-platform is awesome. Now you don't have to alienate your friends as long as the game developers will follow suit. Moving on to one of the subjects I'm very interested in. You may have noticed we left VR good stuff. Amazon Echo, they've updated again this week. They've added in the ability to track Fitbit stats. I, I went in and set mine up earlier and it does work. You just have to go into the skills menu and say Fitbit and then connect it to your Fitbit login information. I asked it earlier and it's like, you haven't walked enough. And it gave me a motivational message and told me to get walking. It's like the, the journey begins with a single step kind of thing. It's awesome. Ring is releasing a brand new video doorbell. If you've seen it, I don't know if you've seen it or not. I made a video a while back. I think it was July of this past year about the Ring video doorbell. Absolutely love my Ring video doorbell, but it is 720p. Now they're releasing a smaller, more sleek and more svelte 1080p video doorbell with some advanced motion detection. The motion detection in the existing one was very, very good. The new one's supposedly even better, and the price point isn't that much higher. It's $250. It's the Video Doorbell Pro. I'm working to see if I can get my hands on one of those, but it's probably not going to happen. If it does, they'll be on the lookout for a video. Now again, as I mentioned in the opening, there was a video over on CNET, a company called Deep Optics, which is making something, they call it Omnifocal. I don't think they're calling it that. Anyway, it's Deep Optics, and what they're doing is tr they're trying to make a set of glasses that use liquid crystal in between the layers, such that it can change your vision depending on where you're looking. So it will correct your eyesight based on if I'm looking at a laptop screen, or if I'm looking at a camera, or if I'm looking at a car off in the distance, it will adjust accordingly. That, that just immediately hit me in the head. I, I'm not gonna be able to drive wearing something like that, at least not until they perfect it, because it might have a little bit of a delay. But still very cool to think that instead of having to have laser eye surgery, you could technically just wear these kind of glasses and have them adjust instead of having to have trifocals, for instance, or bifocals, or just whatever, you could have it adjust automatically, depending on where it's, you're looking. Because inside of the glasses, there's two little cameras that are gonna be watching your eyes to see where your pupils are focusing, and it will adjust accordingly. I'm really looking forward to this. That's an awesome concept. Microsoft has made the announcement that they're working to turn Minecraft into a testing ground for AI. So far, a lot of the AI that people have been doing have been testing it against pl playing various games, things that are very set in stone, and there are specific rules that have to be followed. This is gonna be the first kind of example of that 
using completely open world sandbox, no limits, get from point A to point B, how do I do that? I've got to fight monsters, I've got to climb this hill, I've got to dig this hole, I've got to build these tools. I'm really interested to see what they can do in terms of actual AI, not just I'm a skeleton in a video game, but learning and adapting and whatever else they choose to do with that tech. Please don't make a robot that's gonna kill us. I've been going on entirely too long, let's go ahead and wrap this up. Again, going back to the intro, scientists have come up with a, a new material called Vanta Black. I don't know if I mentioned it before or not, I don't think I did. The world's blackest material, the blackest thing ever imaginable on Earth. Basically, you look at it and you can see the, the innards of an emo teen soul. Well, that material is now available in spray form. So those wonderful emo teens can take it and spray paint walls with it. Now, I, I haven't seen anything on pricing and availability. I'm honestly kind of curious as to how much that's gonna be because I think it'd be really, really interesting to spray paint a piece of foam board. I, I say as I look over, because I got a piece of white foam board over here that was just loving some of that. Spray paint some of that and use that as a backdrop for a video. That's just my, my take on it. I'm sure there are much better possibilities for it, but having something like that that absorbs all of the light so you don't actually have any sort of reflections or shadows or anything would be amazing for video creation. Just gonna say it. And let's wrap things up with a couple of bits of nostalgia. Back to the Future, one of my favorite movies of all time. Self-lacing sneakers was one of the things mentioned in Back to the Future 2 of the series. Back to the Future 2 was probably one of my favorite movies. But self-lacing shoes were mentioned in that and it was always sort of a, oh, it'll happen, it'll happen. It's actually happening. Nike Hyper Adapt 1.0. It senses the presence of the wearer's heel and it tightens the laces accordingly. Let's just hope that they figured it out such that it doesn't tighten them down and cut your foot off. I'm sure it's not possible. It would tear itself to pieces before it did that, but still. Very cool that this tech is happening, that it's getting to that point where we're, we're getting to that state. We've got hoverboards and we're gonna have self-lacing sneakers. Now we need self-drying jackets. Although I saw a story about that somewhere too a while back. And you know what? The last story that I was gonna talk about apparently has been disproven. I just opened it up and it just said again, Update, consider this pure bunk for now, so never mind. I thought that the Beetlejuice movie was gonna happen. It's apparently not, so we'll skip that story. So that's gonna be all from me for today. Loads and loads of great things were talked about here today, and I hope you enjoyed it. I had a bunch of fun doing this. Thank you guys so much for supporting this series. Thank you for all of your support. Thank you for helping me to reach 50,000 subscribers. Make sure to share this video with your friends, family, coworkers, and people that you absolutely hate to see if they're interested in subscribing to the channel as well. I definitely appreciate it. Leave a thumbs up below if you did like this. And you can always subscribe if you want to support the channel, and we will see you again the next time I post a video. Bye, guys.